Hello, welcome to the channel again. Today I'm talking about pitching. Can you pitch? Should you pitch? And if you can, when? I think one of the big questions I get, strangely enough, is what's the difference, chipping and pitching? What exactly are you doing differently? Well, it's a good question really, because there's so many different techniques out there. Some guys say they're chipping it and they're using their wrists. Other guys say that they're pitching it and they're not using their wrists. So what exactly is going on? Well, I think the easiest way to understand what we're really thinking about if we're talking about a pitch or a chip is really the relative roll distance that we were expecting after the golf balls landed. Usually with a pitching shot, we are going to give the golf ball a little bit more spin. The spin will give it a little bit more height because giving a golf ball spin will also give it lift. It will mean it lands at a steeper angle. Um, therefore, it hasn't got that kind of need to move forward once it's landed. And obviously the extra spin is also gonna stop it. So the easiest way to think of a difference between a chip and a pitch is that with a pitch, you're generating more spin, however you do that, and you don't want the ball to roll as far as it would if you were chipping it. When's the best time to pitch then? Well, obviously, when you don't have as much uh, room to play with on the green. If you are basically at the side of a green, even if you're 30, 40 yards away, you might be better off keeping the ball low and letting it roll most certainly, technically, that should be the easier shot. The pitch shot, on the other hand, is more a question when you have no alternative than to fly the ball the majority of the way to the flag and then get it basically to stop as quickly as you can when it lands. Now, the very first thing to look at if you're looking at pitching the ball is creating spin. And the easiest way to create spin is by a decent golf ball. Yes. I know that is one of the strangest things you've ever heard in a pitch lesson, but quite simply, if you're playing a urethane golf ball and every manufacturer makes it, you are generally gonna have far more spin than you would do if you're playing a Serlin or a Yonema golf ball, which won't give you as much spin around the greens. So the quickest way to double the spin of your shots without any technical changes is change your ball. And I'm sure that every local pro shop will be delighted if you go in there and buy four or five different types of urethane ball from different companies and test them out and see which one you prefer. The next way of actually increasing the spin on the ball is to understand it's all about basically the angle of attack. That means how steeply is the club coming down on the ball. It's all about the club head speed and it's all about the loft of the golf club. The dynamic loft, however, that's how much loft does it have at the moment of impact. And one of the maybe strange things to understand here is that over about 45 degrees of dynamic loft, that means once the angle of the club face is more than that, it's going to get less. Over 45 degrees of dynamic loft and you're getting less spin. So all of these lovely pretty shots like lob shots that go high in the air, come down and stop, are stopping because they're landing almost vertically. They're not stopping because of the spin. So it isn't a question of going out there and buying the latest lob wedge. That does not give you spin. All it does is it gives you height. So try and get a little bit of a, an idea. There is a difference between a pitch and a lob. A lob is stopping the ball by allowing it to land vertically. A pitch is stopping the golf ball by using spin both to lift the ball into the air and to stop it when it lands. So primarily, I'm going to experiment with different clubs again, depending on the distance that I want to hit the shot. And I'm going to basically create the extra spin that I need by using my wrists and elbow of my trail arm in the backswing. That means the general difference between a chip and a pitch is a chip has a wider arc and this wider arc is being caused by keeping both of your arms pretty straight during the swing. 
I don't think that there is a soul out there who is chipping a golf ball and has a stiff wrist. There might be, but he's probably not very good at chipping. So you will see a certain amount of wrist movement in every swing. However, it's not necessarily intentional. And as long as you're getting back to the golf ball with a pretty flat angle of attack, then you're gonna have more loft on the face, which is also means it will probably decrease the, um, the spin on the golf ball. The angle of attack decreases the spin on the golf ball, and obviously not having this catapult effect is going to decrease the most important part of spin, which is the club head speed. So decreasing those three will actually cause a flatter flight and a longer roll with the club that you have in your hand. By getting my trail arm to hinge, I'm getting a steeper angle of attack and I'm getting more spin. For the normal hobby golfer, I would definitely recommend just using one ball position and that should be across the middle of your chest. The reason I say the middle of your chest is because with a little bit of hinging of the arms, the deepest point in the golf swing is going to be more or less across from your left heel. This is why you'll be taking divots around about that area. So a ball laying in the middle should be caught before the club head goes into the ground and therefore you can be guaranteed you're hitting it in the downswing. Once you've actually understood that, whether you stand square to the ball or open to the ball is a little bit up to you. I would really recommend that you open your stance when you're pitching the golf ball. The reason is quite simple. It takes care of the hip rotation. In order to get my shoulders moving through the golf ball, irrespective of my swing, whether I'm chipping it, pitching it, or making it a full swing, I have to open my hips. By doing that, it's like opening a door that the shoulders can go through. If I'm standing parallel to the target line, I have to actively open my hips in order to make room for my shoulders to move through the golf ball in plane. If, however, I open my stance, they're already open. That means that if I stand to the golf ball 20, 30 degrees open to the target line, just my hips, just my feet, not my shoulders, not my club face. I'm not opening the club face. I'm leaving the club face square. I'm leaving my shoulders square and I'm just opening my hips. It's like opening the door for the shoulders. Don't really have to work on the hip rotation whatsoever and I've got far more room to swing through the golf ball. Once I've done that, really it's just a case of getting a feeling for the distance of the backswing and the golf club for the distance you want to hit it. Just remember that if you do decide to open your stance, you are naturally shortening your backswing. You won't be able to turn your hips as far away from the target and therefore you will have a naturally shorter backswing. So standing 30 degrees open, for instance, with your hips will get you about a 30 degree shorter backswing. And that might be kind of a building block for your first pitch shot. You know you can't take it back as far, so take it back as far as you can. Once you actually get to the end of your backswing, swing your shoulders down, turn your shoulders to the ball, let your arms follow, let the hands release, and you will actually get a first idea of how far you can hit a pitch with the club that you've got in your hand. So I'm not really going to say there is a particular distance for a particular club because that's going to be very dependent on the, the technique that you're using and the club you're using and your own swing speeds. However, if you follow these simple guidelines, you should be pitching the ball quite proficiently to shorter targets within any time whatsoever. Try and stick, first of all, to the ball across the middle of your chest, to the same address position every time, and first of all, see what every wedge in your bag will actually do with that position. 
once you actually found then that you need more distances than that actually provides, then obviously the next thing would to, to do would be starting to change your length of backswing. Now I know we've all talked about kind of seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. Obviously that takes a lot of practice for you to be able to feel every time. So maybe you could think more about 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees open in your hips and change your backswing length by changing your address position. The beauty of that system is that 10 degrees today is 10 degrees tomorrow and 20 degrees tomorrow is 20 degrees the day after. And that means that's probably a little bit more consistent. It is, however, a strange feeling if you're not used to it because your shoulders will normally stand over your hips and opening your hips to the shoulders sometimes will cause your shoulders to rotate in the wrong direction rather than staying in plane. But I feel to start off with, this is maybe the better way of changing distance that you're hitting the golf ball is by changing the amount that you stay open rather than thinking too much about eight, nine and 10 o'clock. I know, however, and I accept the majority of tour professionals are actually standing pretty consistently when they stand to a pitch shot and they are really kind of going and doing it by feel. They're feeling their nine, nine o'clock, they're feeling their three o'clock, they're feeling their 10 o'clock, but they're doing it every single day. Hope this helps you to pitch a little bit better. If it does, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to us if you haven't done already. Um, if uh, you'd like to become a patron to the site, a patron to the site, I shall leave a link below. Thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, until the next time, all the very best. Bye.